Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Mass Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-host, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Good to hey see guys. you again. Hey. Hey, and, and I told you you're lovely, right? I know I'll tell you every day. I only tell you every day. You love me. <laughs> so this is our second chief chat for the day. So you know if we got two of them in one day, we got an extra special guest. So um, we have with us a very uh, a fan favorite of the military community. You'd be hard pressed to find another household name that does more for the military family. So without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Oh, that's right, Chief. Today's guest is an Oscar-nominated actor and winner of an Emmy, a Golden Globe, and two Screen Actors Guild Awards. He's earned numerous humanitarian awards, including the Bob Hope Award for Excellence in Entertainment from the Congressional Medal of Honor Society, the George Collette Marshall Medal from the Association of the U.S. Army, and the Spirit of Hope Award from the Department of Defense. He's also the recipient of the Presidential Citizens Medal, which is the second highest civilian honor awarded by the President of the United States. He is a staunch advocate for our nation's veterans, and his book, Grateful American, A Journey from Self to Service is now available in paperback and it's at shopmyexchange.com. Please give a warm chief chat welcome to Gary Sinise. Hey. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Well, while we're just thanking Gary, thank you again for joining us and everybody watching. Thanks for being here with us. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Share your questions and comments with Gary. We like um, and make sure you follow our page and enable your notifications because we have each week on Chief Chat and we don't want you to miss a second. So, Gary, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Chief. Good to be here. <laughs> So We're a thankful a bunch. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to tell you a quick story before we get started. Yes, sir. So um, I was at a, a sergeant's uh, uh, at the Air Force Sergeants Association conference in Orlando. It was about probably about a month and a half, two months ago, and uh, our, we had an exchange booth that was right next to the booth for the for the uh, Veterans United uh, Home Loans booth, right? And so I'm talking to because the, the one of the former chief master in the Air Force is works for works there. And also I met this lady named Pam Swan and Pam. As soon as I told him that I was interviewing you later on this month, she was like, oh, my God, Gary, you're, I know Gary. And she started telling me some stories that I can't say on air. And she was like, I'm going to send you a copy of his book uh, autographed and all kind of other stuff. So I couldn't even make it home good. And she sent me a copy of your book. Uh, she started telling me all kind of stories. So uh, just wanted to let Pam know that uh, I didn't forget her story. I told her I was going to say it on air. So uh, Pam says hello. I'm sure you, you I'm sure you uh, very familiar with Pam. Pam is a very, very dear friend. Uh, yes, that, that's wonderful. You got to meet her. She's uh, she's on the advisory council uh, for the Gary Sinise Foundation, my foundation. We've known each other for many years uh she's a great great lady and does great things for our military so uh, i'm glad you got to meet her chief yeah no she was awesome awesome so can you tell our uh, viewers where you calling in from today uh los angeles southern california southern that california sounds beautiful. Well, uh, <laughs> that sounds beautiful that sounds very beautiful it's actually a little gray today it's usually pretty sunny around here but it's a little uh, overcast today uh you know, we have terrible, terrible going on up north. And, uh, I don't know. I've, I've been told that some of that smoke is coming all the way down here uh, into Southern California. Uh, mm -hmm. It's fire season for sure and a uh, very difficult time for people up north. Well, Gary, you come from a long line of service members. Your grandfather, father, uncles all served. We would love to hear more about your family's deep connection to the military. 
Oh, sure. Um, I, I think that, you know, that's primarily, uh, well, not primarily, but that, that's a big piece of why I'm so um, involved with supporting our, our troops and veterans and, and uh, first responders, my, my family, a long line of uh, service members within the family. Uh, my grandfather served in World War I. He was an ambulance driver uh, in mm -hmm. France. Battle of the Argonne, which is one of the, I think it's uh, the, 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 the greatest loss of life um, in, in a single battle that the U.S. has faced, over 26,000 in that particular battle. And he was, mm -hmm. he was taking our wounded uh, away from the uh, front line back to the rear. And, um, uh, you know, I, with my grandfather, he, he passed away in the 70s. And... Um, mm -hmm. I was too young to really uh, know that I should sit down and try to pick my grandfather's brain about uh, what had happened uh, with him in World War I. Uh, I just remember seeing stuff in the basement uh, from his war years, but never really talked to him about it. It was only later on when I started talking to my uncles about my grandfather that I, I learned some of the things. Uh, and his, he had three sons, uh, he and my grandmother. and. Uh, my my two older uh, the two eldest sons both served in World War II. Um, one was a, a navigator on a B-17 bomber over Europe the, uh, on a landing ship tank in the Pacific uh, during Okinawa and Iwo Jima. Then my dad he was the youngest of the three. Uh, he served in the Navy during uh, Korea. Uh, so the you know. The, the immediate family there and then there's cousins and you know various great uncles and all of that lots of military in the family uh on my wife's side i met her in the 70s and she introduced me to her brothers both vietnam veterans one was a helicopter pilot 800 combat and combat hours over vietnam the other was a, a west point graduate uh served two tours uh, in, in Vietnam, one as a, uh, a lieutenant, then he went back as a captain. He uh, uh, went on, uh, served uh, at, came back, served at West Point, actually as a tactical officer when he was a major. And many of our uh, leaders today, and, and then some of them now retired, who have become friends of mine, four-star generals were uh, like General Mike Scaparotti, uh, General Vince Brooks, who actually serves on the board of the Gary Sinek Foundation. Both of them knew my brother-in-law at West Point, and he was their tactical officer. Oh, wow. Had a lot of great things to say about my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law, unfortunately, passed away in 1983 uh, when he was a lieutenant mm -hmm. colonel at Fort Leavenworth. Um, very you know it had a profound effect on me as a young guy and then my wife's sister served in the army she married a combat medic from vietnam who stayed in the army for 22 years their son uh, served in the army for 13 years uh, two deployments to afghanistan so a lot of a lot of military in my family i write about uh, several of them in 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 grateful america in the book yes too I love hearing that your family connection. Thank you for for sharing that with us. Oh, it yeah, explain well. helps explain why you're so so passionate about what it is you you know what you do for our our nation's heroes. And I love hearing about your family connection. Well, I, I think that's that's where it starts. And and I, I'll say this: you know, there's my side of the family, and then there's my wife's side of the family, the Vietnam veterans and her family. And I, mm -hmm. I probably had more a profound effect on me and what I'm doing today than the veterans on my side of the family. When, 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 when I was younger, the veterans on my side of the family, they were, they were well past World War I and World War II. And I didn't really talk to them too much uh, way back when, but it was after I met my wife and she introduced me to her brothers and her sister's husband, the Vietnam veteran side that I really, uh, they, they changed me quite a bit back in the seventies when yeah. I, I'm, and, uh, I think I give them a lot of credit for, for me launching into an effort today to, to ensure that, uh, the men and women who serve our country, uh, you know, it was every day, but, uh, you know, a lot, uh, post nine 11 and, and what has happened in Afghanistan and Iraq, 
that they understand and, and know that they're appreciated, that we're not going to turn our backs on them the way we turned our backs on the Vietnam veteran. And I, I think it's what happened to our Vietnam veterans way back when. And, and my own personal kind of a, oblivious thing uh, going on during the Vietnam War when I was in high school, that that was a real motivator for me to take up the charge to try to, to prevent, you know, our veterans today from being forgotten. Yeah. We, we definitely, definitely do that. a much better job. Oh, go ahead, Chief. Yes. And I we do a much better right. job as a nation of, of welcoming them home where they weren't welcomed home in the 70s. They're now welcomed home t today. And um, thank you for doing your part to make sure that all are honored. You bet. Chief, did you have something? No, no, I was just going to thank him for uh, what he do, does for our military service. I know, uh, especially you spoke on the Vietnam veterans. And uh, even here at the exchange, we try to do our best to to make sure that they're welcome home as well. We do a, a annual ceremony at our exchanges to, 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 you know, anybody that hasn't received a, a pin, a lapel, then we make sure they get it. So we we, we are just as committed as you are to, to recognizing those Vietnam vets. Perfect. Well, they, they didn't get a lot of recognition and uh, appreciation when they came, came home from war. They had to endure uh, the difficulties and challenges of not only fighting uh, the war and uh, having it be an unpopular war, but then returning to a country that really was not supportive and that was kind of divided and torn apart. So many of them, my brother-in-law included, uh, came home from war, and I remember him telling me he had to go in the bathroom and take his uniform off at the airport because people were spitting on the veterans that were getting planes, and, and it was a bad time for them. So we don't want that to ever happen to somebody who's serving our country, and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Thank you for that. And, and thank you to your family members for their service and sacrifices. Um, you know, we're, we're thankful for, for them. Um, and congratulations on Grateful American, a journey from self to service, which is now available in paperback. So for our viewers, you can find Gary's memoir tax free at shopmyexchange.com. Gary, what will readers learn about you in the book and what messages are you hoping that readers will walk away with? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you uh, how the book came about. I, I, you know, I've been at this, uh, at the, you know, supporting our military for, for decades now. And, uh, and especially post September 11th and what happened in our deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan, that just galvanized my mission. And so I started traveling and I started going to the war zones and going to here and there and doing tours and, and then performing with my band, doing all these kinds of things and visiting wherever I could and supporting wherever I could. And my, you know, after a certain amount of time, after several years of doing that, my uh, one of my agents um, introduced me to the book agent at the agency um, who had an idea that I should try to document some of, some of what I was doing uh, in, in book form. And I wasn't quite sure that I, I had the time to write a book or, uh, you know, knew, even knew where to get. But um, they were, they, 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 after, after a time, it became clear that, hey, you know, I've got this full time foundation. Uh, I'm, this is, this is a life's mission. So it's not going away. It's not something I'm going to do and then uh, not do. I'm going to continue doing it. So maybe documenting how we got here uh, would be kind of an interesting thing. And so I started, I, I said, but and here, here's one thing. I said, um, you know, I'm so busy. I don't, I don't think, you know, it's going to take a while to sit down and write a book. I don't think I can do that uh, by myself. I'm going to need a, a writer to work with who can sit with me, listen to me, record me, uh, and then kind of assemble everything and and um, you know which will allow me to see where we're at and then help shape things and so I got this wonderful writer Marcus Brotherton who 
had had uh, worked with another friend of mine, one of our quadruple amputees that I happened to to build a house for with my foundation. His name's Travis Mills, and Travis lost both his arms and both his legs in a bombing in Afghanistan. And he wanted to tell his story. And so uh, some the publishers come, hooked him up with Marcus, and Marcus worked with him on it. So uh, I knew that book. And when they recommended Marcus as one of the 10 writers that uh, you know I could work with, I said, I don't need to go any further. I'm going to talk to Marcus. <laughs> so I did. And uh, we teamed up. And uh, then over a series of uh, many, many sessions, quite like this, sitting here talking <laughs> on FaceTime or whatever. Uh, we shaped the book. He recorded me numerous times over a long period of time, about four, uh, about uh, about 12 months, about a year. And in the beginning, I, I really didn't know what it was going to be. I just started telling stories about going over here and going to the war zone and meeting, you know, just different things that would happen. And then I kind of started thinking, well, why don't we go back even farther and sort of document, you know, how I got to this place where I was devoting all this time to this mission. And then it really did turn into an autobiography that tracks back to the veterans of my own family, my, tells their stories a bit, uh, goes through my childhood, how I got into acting and uh, by accident and where that happened, how I ended up starting a theater company uh, back in the 70s, how, you know, how that kind of gave me the platform to, to learn how to act, which uh, I ended up making a pretty good living at, and then it all manifested <laughs> into this mission, you know, post September 11th. There, there is a chapter in the book called Turning Point. I believe it's chapter 14 or 15. And that, that really documents the September 11th impact on me personally and how <laughs> drove me into this level of service that continues today and in, in this pretty massive way with the Gary Sinise Foundation and, and everything. So it really is kind of an autobiography, pretty funny stories in there about, you know, when I was a kid and what and the mischief I got into and, and, and all of that. And then uh, it uh, kind of ends with the Gary Sinise Foundation and what, uh, what I've tried to do with that and how that's evolved. And, uh, I think it's a pretty, um, you know, at times emotional story because I really try to introduce people that have impacted me and inspired me through the course of all of this and the, the places that I've traveled, just multiple places around the world where our troops are serving and, and the kinds of people that I would meet. Uh, on military bases in the war zones and, and across Europe and Asia and the military hospital and whatnot. And so, you know, some pretty profound, impactful uh, people in my life. Um, and then uh, that's all emotional and, and, and powerful. And then there's some pretty silly stories, too, of when I was a, a you know, misbehaving youth. <laughs> <laughs> I loved those. Those were I loved those parts of the book about when you were a teenager and um, how you got into acting in high school. I I don't know. I I loved those stories. I thought they were great. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad you liked them. We had to we had to uh, you know we had to the book could have been a lot longer or a lot more. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. So uh, and. You, you, you made a great point about how September 11th kind of kind of catapulted you put to this place of service. And uh, I always admire all the military members. I, I joined before September 11th, um, but I admire all the, the, the service members that joined right after September 11th. I think I've got a chance to talk to a bunch of uh, folks and, and, you know, I've they come in and said, you know what, this happened and I just figured I need to do something. And so that was their way of doing something to help out the cause. And so they, they, you know, they rose the right, they, 
they raised their right hand to join the military. And so um, just hearing those stories over the years of my career have been super inspiring because uh, it, you know, it's it impacted us all, uh, no matter you know what side of the, the road that you grew up on. It was just yeah, it, it was one of those things that that kind of banded us together. And a lot of folks were like, you know what, I want to do something. So I, I admire you for doing that. And, uh, and you know, you, you know, even though you like I said, you had a great acting, you got a great acting career, uh, but you found a way to to get back to the military folks in the country. Well, Pete, look, I under I understand those those young folks that raised their hand after that terrible event uh, and and because uh, they were looking for some way to to be a part of supporting their country during this terrible time and that's exactly what what i was doing i mean i i couldn't uh, join the military i'm you know old guy but uh, <laughs> i could could do some and use my public platform as a as a performer and entertainer, uh, an actor uh, to, uh, to draw attention to what our military was doing. And uh, there are many, many stories. I remember during the, the uh, if, if you'll uh, allow me, um, just during the very, very difficult part of the Iraq war, um, when the insurgency really flared up and, and it was really bad in 2004, five, six, seven, around in there. And, um, I'll, you know, I was going to the war zones in, in, in those days and, and going there. And, you know, there was a lot of, uh, negative media coverage going on during that time, um, that the, the war was not going well. And, and then you saw the uh, Abu Ghraib photographs on the cover of the newspapers every single day for two months. And the, the, the soldiers that were in that prison pictures, they became kind of the face of the military. And, and, and I had been over there multiple times seeing the, the, the honorable service of so many of our, our service members and what they were trying to do to to keep the bad guys from hurting people over there and uh, to, to rebuild schools and help the people and all that. And none of that was being reported with any frequency. And so I came back from, from, from those, uh, you know, those trips and I tried to show what was going on. And I ended up starting a school supply program where we were sending school supplies to our troops over there and they would take them out and give them to the kids and, and uh, they would support these children and, and, and try to help people. There was a lot of, lot of things, a lot of impactful moments uh, during the course of that. And, and so I was trying on my side to just back up the people that had volunteered to go serve their country after that terrible, terrible, terrible day 20 years ago. No, absolutely. And like I said, we appreciate it. And, uh, and like you mentioned, it's just, it's a shame that negativity or, or that, that gets more highlighted a lot more and people are, are drawn to, to negativity more than all the awesome stuff. Cause uh, you know, in my 20 plus years of being in the military, man, it, it's some outstanding people in this world. Uh, and, and, and I see that more and more every day. And I, I tend to focus on that more so than all the stuff that everybody gets drawn to, because that's what, you know, we, we like drama <laughs> uh, for whatever reason. So, uh, but I, so, I do want to switch. So does so it me. So does the yeah. news. They like you know if, if if there's if there's a fire on the on the on the block and the one house is burning and the other one isn't, you, you're not going to show the one that's not burning. You know they end Correct. up showing, right? Yeah, there's absolutely. ten block that aren't burning, and which one gets the attention? Of course, the burning house. And that I remember sitting down doing an interview with ABC News, and I said, "There's." There's so many things that our troops are doing over in Iraq and Afghanistan that aren't getting reported in terms of helping the people. Why don't you report some of those things more frequently? And then the, off camera, the guy said, well, bad news sells. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, a, that's crazy. So uh, kind of shifting gears a little bit, um, I want to talk about uh, you played the wounded uh, Vietnam War veteran, Lieutenant Dan Taylor 
in the Academy Award winning uh, Forrest Gump, which is probably one of my favorite characters of all time. And so I'm just trying to figure out how would you channel your inner Lieutenant Dan? Like, where where'd you get that inspiration from? <laughs> <laughs> Well, my cha channel my inner Lieutenant Dan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, um, I, I kind of document in the book how uh, profoundly impacted I was by the Vietnam veterans and my family and Vietnam veterans that I had met in Chicago uh, back in the early 80s. Uh, Forrest Gump came out in 1994, so I didn't audition for that movie till 1993. But back in the 80s, I had started supporting Vietnam veterans and uh, working with them uh, to, to try to help them through difficult times and uh, ended up uh, back in the late 80s uh, helping to build a Vietnam veterans memorial in Lansing, Illinois, and, and just trying to do what I could to help our Vietnam veterans, because they were, you know, even though the war had come to an end, uh, combat operations had ended in 1973, fall of Saigon in 1975. Here we are in the 80s, and we have uh, a lot of Vietnam veterans that were struggling. And so I, I, I started trying to support them in various ways. And then, of course, met Vietnam veterans through my wife and who had brothers. And then along came Forrest Gump, and I had this opportunity to audition to play a wounded Vietnam veteran. And I very, very much wanted to do that, having been impacted by so many Vietnam veterans prior to that. So uh, Lieutenant Dan came along. I was lucky to get the part. I ended up uh, after that supporting our wounded uh, very uh, a actively through the Disabled American Veterans Organization, which I'm still supportive of all these years later. Uh, I have met uh, just uh, numerous, uh, too many to count, uh, great Americans who were wounded in Vietnam and, and um, who became very, very good friends of mine and um, uh, have in inspired me and motivated me and now we try to, uh, through the Gary Sinise Foundation, we try to team up our Iraq and Afghanistan wounded veterans with older veterans from, from Vietnam um, who have been living with their injuries for, for decades now and survived that and moved on. And, and like ten, Lieutenant Dan, uh, found a way to, to move beyond their war years and, and succeed in life. That's, that's very, very important. So, I, uh, that's the way I channel my inner Lieutenant Dan. I, I, I just haven't seemed to, uh, been able to shake him. He's still, he's still, <laughs> he's still. yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, how, how you feel about bedpans and ice cream cones, uh, you know, so many years later, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a big event chief in, um, in uh, Dallas uh, that I've done with American Airlines many, many years. American does a lot of great things to support my foundation and help us transport people around and, and transport my band around. And uh, each year, you know, prior to COVID, they, uh, they were doing a, a big event to raise money for our military called Skyball in, in Dallas. And at one point, one of my buddies decided he wanted to have a grog ceremony on the stage. You know the grog ceremony? Oh, yeah. I, I'm very familiar with the grog. I've drunk out of plenty of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, he wanted to, you know, there's 4,000 people packed into a hangar at, uh, at Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. And we're doing this big event. And uh, they're, they're having a grog ceremony on stage. And he said... You know, everybody's dumping in things into the grog bowl. That's what it is, for those of you that don't know, but I'm sure everybody knows. Somebody comes up from the various branches of the military in different units, and they dump alcohol or whatever into this big bucket, and then everybody drinks it. Well, he wanted me to be a part of the grog ceremony, so he said, well, you come and put some ice cream in a bedpan and dump it into the bowl. <laughs> and so, Year. Every year, Lieutenant Dan would come up with a bed full of ice cream and grab <laughs> That's all. Yeah, no, they, they put some very creative stuff in that grog ball. I can tell you that. So, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. It, 
<laughs> oh, I can't escape Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> well, speaking of Gary, you're also known for your work with the Lieutenant Dan Band. Tell us about the band and your mission and your music. Well, the band is uh, a part of the mission uh, quite ago, um, about 18 years. Um, I was, I was really, at that time, I had some musicians that I played with in Chicago, just for fun. And when I would come to town, I'd call them up, we'd get together and order some pizza and, and, uh, just play some music. And it was just for fun. And then, uh, after September 11th, when I started, uh, going on tours and, uh, you know, being, a, being part of entertaining the troops or visiting the troops, I, I would see different entertainers out there and I wanted to do the same thing. So I, I eventually talked to USO and let me take the musicians with me on a tour. Went, uh, in, uh, 2003, we played our first USO show in Chicago and, uh, another one, a few months, later, Great Lakes Naval base. And 2004, we went, uh, you know, I was able to put the, this tour together with the USO, and they sent us to Korea and Singapore and uh, Diego Garcia uh, down in the middle of the Indian Ocean, and they, you know, which is as far away as you go. <laughs> yeah. They they had never asked me if we were any good. They didn't ask me for a CD. <laughs> I had already done six or seven handshake tours where I go out and shake hands with the troops and visit with them and that kind of thing. Every time I'd go on a tour, I'd say, you know, why don't you let my musicians with me? They finally did set that up, and the first show we played was as far away from civilization as you could get. I guess they wanted to make sure we were we were okay before they got us on the other military. So we went to Diego Garcia first, then we went to Singapore and then to Korea. And then I came back from that tour and said, send me a, I went to a domestic tour. So we started, we went to Fort Polk, we went to Kirtland Air Force Base, we went to Goodfellow Air Force Base, we did a kind of a domestic bus and truck tour. And that began just a nonstop, full on, um, mission to support our with entertainment. It became a part of my, uh, I was doing all kinds of supporting a lot of different military things and, and whatnot, but the thing I wanted to do was lift spirits, raise spirits and, and go to the place where our, our troops were, entertain them and lift them up and let them know I care about them and love them. And uh, uh, since uh, 2003, I think the played 530 some on military bases and military hospitals and uh, various fundraising efforts to support our troops and first responders um, over over the years, over these 18 years. It's been a full nonstop thing. You could go to GarySiniceFoundation.org, go to our YouTube channel, there's an icon at the bottom of the homepage, and you can see dozens of videos from various uh, trips that I've made with the band and, you know, home building efforts that we have, lots of documentation on there uh, as to the impact um, and the, you know, the foundation in action. And then speaking of the foundation, it's the 10th anniversary of the Gary Sinise Foundation. So can you tell us about the foundation and its mission? Um, we'd love to hear more about that. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, I think chapter 15 and 16, Grateful America sort of, you know, document the ramping up to my decision to create the foundation and then what went into the foundation and our programs and all of that. And so much of what we do at the foundation uh, has, has come out of what I was doing prior to, to having the foundation. Uh, the music, the the meal, the old car initiative, the building homes, all these different things were things that I was doing prior to creating the foundation. So when I started the Gary Sinise Foundation, 
I just wanted to, to start to expand that work and do more of it. And so we branched into, into supporting and taking them to the National World War II Museum in in uh, New Orleans and, uh, yeah. you know, first responder initiatives, firefighters, police officers, EM. Uh, and then during COVID-19, we created an called COVID-19 Combat Emergency Combat Service where we raised money to support our frontline healthcare workers, supporting, you know, doctors and nurses and, and people uh, working in the hospitals on, on in hospitals all over the country. I mean, just dozens and dozens of efforts. So it's a good cause. It's a good mission. We've got the support of the American people. We continue to do good things uh, around the country. And there's, you know, obviously there's, there's going to be an ongoing need. We can never do enough to serve our country. And, and, and I wanted to start the Gary Sinise Foundation so I could do more. And for those of uh, you who are watching out there, we did pin a link to a video from uh, the foundation's YouTube page at the top of our comment. So we rolled a small clip of it while Gary was talking just now. But if you'd like to see the whole video, you can click on that link to learn more about the foundation. Is that the 10th anniversary of video? I believe it is. So that's a that's a good, um, it kind of shows a little bit of the breadth of some of the things that we've been involved in for the last 10 years. The foundation started out in 2011. I launched it in June of 2011. Uh, I only had a couple of people for the foundation at that time. It was me and our executive director and a couple of other folks. Now we've got uh, upwards of 45 to 50 uh, staff members uh, accomplishing multiple initiatives across many different spaces. We've got the support of thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of donors. I think over 100,000 donors go to the Gary Sinise Foundation to support care. Uh, my plan and my goal is to, is to stand up a foundation, continue working to build a strong enough foundation that it can last well, well beyond me and continue to help people for many, many years to come. Excellent. So, Gary, can you share with our viewers um, what does it mean to you to know that you're personally making a difference to our nation's heroes? Well, it's a it's a joy for me to know that there is something that I can do to help our defenders and their families. That's that's a personal joy. Um, there's a line in my book. Um, I think it's something that I wrote when joy connects to mission purpose, a life's purpose begins to take shape. And I truly, you know, didn't know where this all go back when, when I started on this, but once I started doing it and I could see the impact that, that just simply showing up was making, you know, I was donating raising money all that kind of thing but but i could see what what it meant to folks when you just simply show up and pat them on the back and give them a hug and wrap your arms around them and tell them you appreciate what they're doing that gave me a sense of purpose and joy that i was actually able to do something with uh my public platform that i have as a as a celebrity as a actor on tv but also as a, as a grateful American, I'm grateful for the freedom that is provided by other people. I didn't very myself. I'm grateful for the men uh, uh, and who serve in our military. I'm grateful for the veterans of my own family and what they've done to provide freedom for, for me and others uh, over the years. And I want them to know it. I just simply want people to know it. Uh, and so I, I found that using my public platform, the megaphone that I have, the microphone that I have to talk to people, tell them what I'm doing and 
get interviewed and go go where the troops are and <laughs> tell them uh, they're appreciated. That that could make a difference, and, and that made me feel good knowing that. And I tried to teach that to my kids, you know, <clears throat> that there are always people out there, no matter what you're doing and what you're going through and the difficulties uh, that you're having on any particular day. There's always somebody out there who's having a worse day than you are. And yeah. um, you, you never know what simply walking up to somebody and telling them, hey, thank you, I'm grateful, uh, I appreciate you, what that can do to change somebody. I, I made that uh, just a, a tradition and you know, just part of my, my daily life when I would be out and I would see somebody in uniform, uh, police officer, firefighter, military member, just to go up and pat them on the back and say, hey, thanks. Thanks a lot for, for doing what you're doing because I, I appreciate it. You should know that. And, you know, you just never know. I mean, I've had people write me letters for, you know, to tell me that just a 30-second moment of me expressing my appreciation and letting them know that that – that moment could have changed everything. I mean, you, you don't know if somebody uh, that you see in an airport in uniform just lost 10 buddies in some battle somewhere. Yeah. And they're, they're holding that in and they're dealing with all that kind of stuff. And they're feeling like, what, why did it happen? You know, I mean, certainly what we're going through now in Afghanistan, you've got a lot of people wondering that kind of thing. And, and just a simple gesture uh, acknowledgement and appreciation and, and, and support and gratitude might turn that person's day around. And, and uh, I, I, I've tried to make that a practice, you know, just, just, I'm blessed. I've been blessed. I've had a lot of great things happen in my career. I'm blessed with the freedom that I have that others provide. And I want them to know that I don't take that for granted. Absolutely. And so what I'm going to do right now is pass you the, the chief chat megaphone since, I mean, you, you, you I know you, we've, we've talked about it, uh, but you've got a very, very captive audience right now. Uh, we've got soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guard members and families watching from all over the world right now. Uh, can, you, can you give them some words of hope uh, today? Yeah, this has been a, um, it's been a particularly difficult couple of weeks uh, for our military service members, particularly and especially those who have served in Afghanistan over the last 20 years. Uh, and, you know, our Marines, uh, soldiers, naval personnel uh, who, you know, lost uh, their peers last week on August 26th. And it's been a difficult time. Um, I want, I want everyone to know, you know, uh, regardless of whether, you know, people are always telling you good job or, or not, or, or regardless of whether you're feeling kind of lost at this moment and, and, and wondering what the 20 years meant, it meant, it meant a lot. And you should never, ever, ever doubt that what you did in Afghanistan, the friends who sacrificed parts of themselves and the Gold Star families who lost loved ones there, that uh, that, that meant something. Our, our country responded to the most terrible attack on our homeland ever. Um, a month after that attack, we deployed to Afghanistan. We've been there for 20 years, and there hasn't been an attack planned from the mountains or the valleys of Afghanistan by any terrorist group during that 20 years. Millions of Afghan women and children have gone to school. Um, they, they had their first female Air Force pilot, uh, women were 
in government. Um, it's a damn shame, disheartening and discouraging that after 20 years, the Taliban has returned to power. But during that 20 years, your service mattered to millions and millions of people there and here. It mattered to me a great deal. And that's why I've decided to spend the remaining years of my life doing what I can to make sure that you know, no matter what, no matter what you're feeling, I feel honored, grateful, appreciative, and proud to know that there are men and women like you out there willing to serve our country and protect people like me and my family. Man, th thanks so much for that. Man, that was that was powerful. And um, I appreciate um, those words to all our service members and uh, out there in the world. So thank you for that. Thank you. And Gary, you're getting um, a ton of positive comments on our Facebook page. Lots of hearts and thumbs up going out, especially for what you just said. Wanted to read some of those comments to you now. Uh, Donna Bear says, you are one in a million. Thank you for all your efforts. Um, Mitch says, Mitch Slotnick says, thank you for being a good friend to me and all my veteran brothers and sisters, Semper Fidelius. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lane York says, Lieutenant Dan, I saw your show two times here in Yuma, Arizona. We vets love you here, man. So tons of love. Um, Let's see. Um, Carolyn Sheltman says, you are a great actor and a great person. And Nicole says uh, that your book sounds like a great read. And she can't, she says, can't believe it's been 12 years since seeing Gary at Fort Riley. We are in Vincenza now. So she's watching from Italy today. Uh, Carla Contreras says, Gary is a patriot. Thank you for your support and hard work from Phoenix, Arizona. And I know we have some folks watching on Chief Osby's page as well. Uh, Brian says, you're the best, Gary. Barbara Tinder says, hello from Wichita. And Chief, you should also know that I think Papa Trot is watching. Um, oh, yeah, he says, Papa Trot is live from upstate New York. Papa Trot is a Chief Chat top fan, so he <laughs> tunes in to all the things. So he's sending you some love today too, Gary. That's that's wonderful. Thank you thank you very much. It, uh, it's 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 nice to know that um, that people hear the message. That that's the important thing, you know. I want I I want our service members to know that that they're they're appreciated. And so I I continue to do that, and I've tried to to stand up a foundation where. The American people could uh, believe it was worthy of support, trust that we're worthy of support, give us their generous donation so that we can pass uh, that on to the, the men and women who serve currently or have served, who sacrificed our gold star families, our wounded. Um, there's, there's so many that uh, don't ask for anything, you know, but knowing that people like me or you know, there are many grateful Americans out there. I hope that that, that uh, makes a difference um, when, you're, when you're going about your day, you know, just knowing that, hey, there are people out there who care. There are people out there who know what I'm doing and they appreciate what I'm doing. Yes, sir, your message is being heard loud and clear this afternoon. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Thank you for that. So Gary, um, what's ahead for you? Any other projects that you can tell us about? Let's see. Um, no, I have some, um, right now I have some narrations going on that I'm doing. Um, I'm staying pretty close to home these days uh, for family reasons. And, um, and uh, you know, my foundation is kind of in a reshaping, rebuilding phase right now. So we're re, uh, reorganizing. So I'm, I'm supporting our, our CEO and, and uh, our uh, leadership team on that side, uh, trying to do what we can there. Um, and just recently, I um, 
I did, uh, well, well, I guess, gosh, it wasn't that recent. I, it was a couple of years ago. I had a movie come out called I Still Believe. And uh, that, you know, uh, what happened with I Still Believe, it got a great launch. There was a lot of press attention going into it. And the week it premiered, I went to the premiere and all this COVID stuff was starting to happen. It was March, March last year, right? And I remember going to the premiere and everybody was grabbing hand sanitizer and thinking, oh gosh, there's a virus around. We got to keep our hands sanitized. And within five days, everything locked down. Movie theaters were closed. The premiere of the movie went boom, you know, it just crashed and nobody was going to the theaters because everything was, was, was closed up. So they eventually released the movie online and it's a very, very good movie. Uh, I'm not the star of it or anything like that, but the two young people that are in it, now KJ Appa and Britt, Britt Robertson, <laughs> God, I blanked out. <laughs> Uh, Britt Brit is a terrific actress. Um, Britt and KJ are just so good in the movie. Shania T Twain plays uh, my wife in it, and uh, I play the father, and it's a, it's a beautiful film, I still believe. You can get, get it online, uh, wherever. Um, and then that, that was kind of the last movie I did. Uh, I, I actually, right before that, I did mo a movie called Joe Bell with Mark Wahlberg that uh, recently came out, but they, they suffered the sort of the same, the same uh, issue because the theaters are just not, you know, people aren't packing the theaters right now. So um, difficult time in the movie business. Uh, we hope that we get through it. Um, 2022 hopefully will be a better year. Hoping so too. And before we say goodbye, we want again to remind our viewers that it matters where you shop. Grateful American is available tax-free at shopmyexchange.com. Gary, can you remind us where can we go to find out more about you, your book, and your foundation? Yeah, well, all of that can be found on uh, at the Gary Sinise Foundation website, uh, GarySiniseFoundation.org. You can go uh, to that. Um, the book is actually, you can actually purchase the book, uh, sign copies of the book at the website. Um, you, can, uh, you can see dozens and dozens of videos on our YouTube channel showing uh, the good work that the foundation's involved in, going back many, many years. I mean, lots of documentation there. Uh, all our programs are listed there. Um, and that you can learn about uh, the various programs, uh, our home building program, our gold star initiatives. Uh, we're trying to do what we can to make sure we cover a lot of bases of the Gary Sinise Foundation. You can learn more about that at GarySiniseFoundation.org. And that's awesome. So Gary, it has been an honor and a pleasure to have you with us today. Uh, it, it's refreshing to, to hear you speak and, and to see you and like you said, uh, just, just sharing some time with us because you said, you know, just showing up uh, is just that in itself. And uh, you you are actually one of the people that, you know, there's that walk the walk. You know, you you, you don't just you don't just talk and say thank you. You're out there on the grind, uh, on the front lines, uh, at bases, shaking hand and really showing love. And, and uh, I can't I can, there's no. Yeah, I can't thank you enough. Yeah. I, and I know the service members uh, when, when we sent the promo out. Uh, there was a lot of great feedback on having you on the show and and the, all the stuff that you've done. And people started posting pictures of when you were, I think one of my friends is from Chicago. So she, you were at a Cubs game talking to them about the Cubs. And, and I always, you know, give a crap about Chicago right now because uh, the Cubs aren't that great. But, but, but uh, just, you know, just, just yeah. But just seeing you out there and, and all the stuff that you do for our military community is, is amazing. Uh, you you're, you're an amazing person, and we thank you so much for what you do every single day. Chief, thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you for serving our country and, uh, and for having me 
uh, on the, on the show. I, I, I really appreciate being able to talk to everybody and uh, to let them know personally uh, that I'm uh, one grateful American uh, for everything you do in service to our country. My heart goes out to our Gold Star families, uh, our recent Gold Star families from the bombing last last week. Uh, they should they should know that uh, I don't take that for granted. I I I, I my heart is broken for them and for all our Gold Star families and the, the men and women, the mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters who sacrifice in service to our country. So I'll just keep doing what I'm doing and, and uh, hopefully they'll, they'll keep letting me do it out here. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely so gary thank you so much if you don't mind hanging on uh, just uh, uh just for a second after the live i got something for you uh but uh we wish you the best we love you thank you so much and chief chat out